Hi guys, in this video we're going to see some of the general assumptions we're going to make in this course and also we're going to see the notation we're going to use. The general assumption, assumptions are pretty simple, basically we're going to assume that all the jobs that we have to process are going to be available at time zero. This is the general assumption in static programs and if some jobs would arrive during the day then we would have to process them the next day okay we're also going to assume that the machines are always available throughout the scheduling period that the processing times like the ones we saw in the previous video are known and deterministic the routes of for each job uh, are known and they do not change a machine, any machine can process only one job at a time, they can only undertake one task at a time and once a machine has um, taken up a task, this task has to be fully completed before the next task is taken. Also, a task of a job is done on only one machine. You cannot split a task and, and send a part of, of the task to different um, machines. There is also no job pre preemption. So basically, we cannot interrupt a machine once it has started processing a certain task. Okay. And finally, in that there is no assemblies or divergences in in the order of of the tasks for each job. Okay, each task each task has only one precedent and one successor. So we will not see um, networks like like this one. The, the, there is only a predefined uh, order for for the task to, to be completed for each job. And finally, we're going to assume that there is only one machine of each type. This may sound quite strict, but it's not as strict as, as it sounds. If we had several machines that can undertake the same uh, task, what we would do is to group them, treat them as one, and then just balance the workload um, for each machine within each, each group, okay? Now we're going to see a little bit of notation, just a couple of slides. It's gonna be hard, but let, let's try to make it quick. So we're gonna use this notation with the four slashes for N will be the number of jobs, M will be the number of machines, the third letter here will identify the type of problem. It can be either permutation flow shop or flow shop or job shop. And the final letter will indicate the efficiency measure that we want to optimize. And we will talk about this in, in the next video. Uh, usually, I'm going to try to use the letter J for job to make things easier and the letter I for the number of, of the machine, okay? So we are going to use the letter R to denote the ready time, which represents the time at which the job is ready to start is its execution. So in static problems, which, which are the ones we're going to deal with in this course, this ready time is for, for all the jobs is going to be zero. All the jobs are available at, at time zero. Each job will have a certain due date and we're going to denote that due date with the letter D. So having seen that, how what, what's the available time we have to finish a, a certain job J? Well, it will be the difference between the due time at which we have to, to finish this job minus the time at which that job is ready to, to be executed. In static problems, as we saw, uh, we're going to assume, well, the ready time is always zero. Every job is available at time, uh, is ready to be executed at time zero. So basically, 
we're gonna have as much time as the due date for each job to to be processed then in terms of, of tasks or operations we'll sometimes talk about operations uh, we are going to denote the processing time of job J in machine I as P J I okay this is how long job J will have to be in, in machine I and once we've fixed a certain order for for the jobs we want to process um, each job will have a completion time which is the time at which the job is finished and we're going to denote that completion time with C for completion there's also a measure called flow time of the job J and this is the length of time that job J is at the workshop and and that basically in general is the completion time the time at which the the job has been completed minus the time at which it was ready but in static problems as R the ready time is zero then the flow time and the completion time will will be the same and finally the last one keep it up guys uh, we're going to define the lateness of a job as the difference between the completion time for that job minus the due date. So basically, if we manage to complete a job, to finish a job before its due date, this magnitude, the lateness, will be negative, right? Because the time at which the job is completed, which is C of J, will be less, will be smaller, than the due date, the time at which we have we 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 committed to to complete it. So when this lateness is negative, that means we will find we're early, we've finished before the due date, and we can also define the earliness of the job as 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 the absolute value of the lateness when we're early. And if the lateness is positive that means that the completion time is greater than the due time that means we were late we didn't manage to finish by the due date and then we can define the tardiness of, of the job the job is late and the tardiness would be the absolute value of the lateness in this in this case okay so with this we finish this video and i look forward to seeing you in, in the next one see you in a, in a minute